All right, thanks for staying, and uh, we'll go straight into the sports. Of course, we have to start uh, from what happened 10 years ago today, October 16, 2009. That was when Andrea Yu uh, captained the Black Star Life team to defeat the rest of the world at the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Daniele J, Danielado, Jonathan Mensah, Samuel Inkum, Dominic Edi, Arans for the were all part of the team. Abi Kukwansa, coached by Sela Stete. Uh, managed to defeat the rest of the world. So, just to give you an idea what happened 10 years ago, check this out. First penalty of the shootout, it's Kardec right into the corner. Move forward from the halfway line. Are you now for Ghana to make it 1 1? Or can Rafael save? Here. Another great penalty. Chance to make it 2-2. Two -two. Another fantastic penalty. Wolf whistles now around the stadium. Can he hold his nerve and score from the spot? Short run up. Goalkeeper saves. Advantage Brazil. Sosa to put Brazil on the verge of success. Oh, and the keeper saved it. Ade is next. Oh, it's a poor one. It's a dreadful penalty. One kick now from Brazil, and they are FIFA under 20 world champions. Maicon. who came on as a sub against Germany and scored twice to take Brazil through to the semi-finals. Maicon to win the World Cup at under-20 level for Brazil. Oh, no! If he misses, Brazil have won. He has to score. He has to score. Most remarkable penalty shootouts I've seen, to be honest. Alex Teixeira. Saved! And now Garner on one kick away. Africa. Oh, one kick away from their first ever success at the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. If Badu can score this penalty, is it Africa? Is it Africa? It is! Ghana have won the competition for the first time. On African soil, an African team, down to 10 men, after 37 minutes of the match, what an extraordinary ending to the final, what an extraordinary ending to the shootout, African winners on African soil. Frankly, the best team of the tournament, I think, won. But how they won it. Badu, who is a full senior Ghanaian international, and he will always be known as the man whose penalty kick in the shoot. One. Of course, good moments for Ghana 10 years ago. I said the Black Satellite won the FIFA Under 20 World Cup, becoming the very first African team. Uh, to do so, Salastete, Ajman Bedou. Ajman Bedou actually scored the last penalty uh, for Ghana to win the uh, tournament. At a point, it was for Brazil uh, to just win it. Ma Maicon uh, then uh, blasted the ball away, and the advantage came to Ghana's side, and Ajman Bedou made sure we won the uh, competition 
10 years ago. Well, my colleague Baba Tando uh, was one of many journalists that covered that competition. Uh, Baba, thanks so much for joining me this morning. Well, f first of all, how was it like covering the tournament? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was really nice covering that tournament because, you know, the Egyptians, um, I mean, right from the onset, were very open to us. They really, they really accepted us. They made us feel so welcome. I mean, they were all over us asking almost every moment in time if indeed we needed help or whatever. They tried every way possible to make us, you know, feel at home to be able to, you know, um, do this work and do that job, um, you know, to the best of our of our, of our, of our ability. So mm. I mean, it was it was really a nice experience covering it. Um, Shuttle from hotel to the to the stadium, from hotel to the training centers, and all of that. Everything was on point, and so it was it was really amazing having that tournament. Mm, I know Ghana started a campaign off in Ismailia, and before they came to uh, Cairo to play the final, did you at any point and spades were going to win the competition? Look, um, in Ismailia, we played our first game and then we drew. And, I mean, nobody gave us a job chance. We played our first two games in Ismailia, and then we moved over to um, Alexandria, I yeah. think. Yeah, we moved over to Alexandria, and then, I mean, we started winning. We won our second game in Ismailia, and then we went to Alexandria to win our third game, our third group game. And then um, on we proceeded to, you know, to, to Cairo. Nobody gave Ghana a dog chance because look, here you were meeting the best in the world at this level. You were meeting Brazil, you were meeting um, Czech, you were meeting Uruguay. I mean, you were meeting the best on the African continent with regards to, you know, the youth system. Yeah. There was Senegal, there was South Africa, Nigeria, you know. And so, I mean, starting the tournament off like that, it, it gave us a, 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 a lot of mixed feelings because we didn't know what to expect. And... Um, I, I don't know. There was something in that group of players. I, I don't know what it was because I was always at their training ground. And at every training ground, they were doing one thing which, which, which was really amazing. After each game, they came back and realized whatever mistake that they committed in, in that previous game. And mm. they always made sure, Sela Sitter led that task. They always made sure that they actually corrected every one of the single mistakes. And so it was improvement game after game. And, I mean, by the time we were in the quarterfinals, mm. it, was, it was pretty clear where Ghana was going. I mean, we said that, all right, we will be able to get to the finals, but maybe we will not win, depending on who we meet in the finals. Yeah. And um, the chairman of that committee, of that management committee, Jordan Anagla, may he so rest in peace, he, he put something in the boys. He kept telling the guys that, look, there's nothing that is impossible under this 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 done. Anything you put your mind to, you can do it. So I mean, I am not going to Ghana empty-handed. I don't know what I'm going to Ghana. So you need to win this. You must win this. And I mean, led by um, you know Captain Dede Ayu, it was it was it was always amazing, and it was always nostalgic watching any match at all that they played in Egypt. And, uh, and so from the beginning, it was difficult. But when we got to the quarterfinals. It was clear that we were going to get to the final, but mm. we didn't know what to expect because we didn't know who we were going to meet in the final. And when it happened that it was Brazil, ooh, <laughs> when you had the likes of like, uh, Michael, you had Alexander Teixeira, you had, I mean, it was, it, 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 it was too much for us. And to be honest, I tell you what happened to me on the day of the final. It was, it was difficult just sitting down to watch. I, I couldn't. I threw up. I felt sick because... It was, it, was, it was just too much. At a point, I got up from my chair and I had mm. to sit on the floor because I couldn't, I just couldn't stand it. Wow. All through the night. And then it, it was even worse for me when Daniel Addo was shown that red card in the 36th minute or the 36th minute or so. I mean, we were all in despair. We, threw up, we, we gave up. We, were, we, we all gave up. All right. But these guys were something else. Mm. And then um, we wore on, wore on, wore on got to the 90th minute, had to go through extra time. Look, it was an excruciating experience watching that game. And then, fast forward to the final kick for Iman al and and yes, okay. I couldn't even jubilate. I couldn't, I couldn't shout. I, I, I couldn't do anything when he scored. It was after when we got to the hotel, when I saw the cap, then I knew that indeed it wasn't a dream. Wow.
Baba, thank you very much uh, for your time this morning. Definitely, we'll find time and talk more about this uh, today. So, uh, that was what happened 10 years ago uh, in Egypt, Cairo International Stadium, when the Black Salites uh, became the very first African team to win the FIFA Under 20 World Cup. You saw Andrea Yu, uh, very young Andrea Yu, he was the captain of the team. Salastete uh, was coach of the team. The late Jordan Anagula was the management chairman of the team. Mike Ado uh, was uh, in the uh, shot somewhere as well as uh, Babu Mohammed, uh, Daniel Ej, Daniel Ado, Jonathan Mensah, all these top guys. Today we'll try and see if we can get uh, some of the players uh, to interact uh, here in our subsequent sports bulletins. But the story is that it's exactly, today is exactly 10 years ago, 16th October 20, 2009, that Ghana uh, became the very first team to win the FIFA Under-20 uh, World Cup. Well, away from that, exactly a week today will be the last day of campaign for those seeking to be elected onto the new Ghana Football Association Executive Council. Now, one man who is put himself uh, for a slot on the ESCO, that's the Executive Council, is Mr. Makado. The Inzema Kotoko top official uh, has been speaking about the kind of leader the new FA will need in repairing the image of Ghana football. Proven leadership, you know, don't just believe the hype of our people promising the world. Look, look for people with proven leadership. What have they done in the past that warrants them to be where they are or for action for the world? If you, if you look critically what people have done in the past, then you can say, well, this guy or this individual has, uh, this person has that capability to deliver on the, on the big stage. Mm. So to me, that's a core, that's a core reason to look for, well, it's some of the key reasons to look out for when you're evaluating somebody to vote for. And once you get that person, the the other good thing is the current structure that we have, the statues, the leader is not going to be a detector autocratic as he used to be in the past. So now you, the leader is kind of, will be, will be managed in, 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 in inevitably by the board. All right, so Mr. Makado is a top official uh, at Nzema Kotoko. He's also seeking to be on the new Executive Council of the Football Association. Well, as it stands, it is unclear whether the process will come off as planned uh, after a fresh interlocutory injunction hit uh, the FA. A third division club, as I mentioned earlier, that said, Tema said, uh, the normalization committee yesterday claiming the entire process must be stopped until court hears the full case on October 22. Now, the FA uh, was slapped with a writ of summons and statement of claim by one Moses Dahama. Uh, seeking among others a true and proper interpretation of the relevant GFA CAF and FIFA regulations regarding the disqualification of Mr. Wilfredo or Sey Kweku, uh, affectionately known as Palmer, from contesting the GFA elections is illegal, null and void. There will be more on this plus other stories when you join us at 2, our major sports bulletin on this platform. My name is Benedict Tosu. Thanks so much for your company. The show continues after this short break. Don't go away. <laughs>